Francis Junior Okelwo, also known as Fren Sax, is a self driving professional saxophonist whose forte is ministering with a sense of rhythm with the saxophone. He's one of Nigerians' most gifted and promising talents with a captivating style of music. His music style ranging from gospel, modern traditional reading to contemporary African genre. Fensak studied computer science at Lagos State Polytechnic, but his undying love for music and passion for music made him jettison his educational career to become a professional musician. He's a convener of an annual praise concert theme, Top Experience, and has ministered in several praise events. Now we have the pleasure of having or introducing to you Fransax, who is right in the studio with us, with his amazing saxophone, of course. Good morning, Fransax, and thank Good you morning. for Good joining morning. us. Thanks Good for morning. joining us. Well, Fransax, from um, studying computer science mm -hmm. into full-time music. Now, that was that, was that transition. Yeah. What, what prompted that transition? It was just my undying love. I just really wanted to do this, and it was my best way of giving back to society. Mm -hmm. So. I went into it and I was sure I wanted to do it. So have you always loved music from inception or you just, um, your maybe mom, dad, musicians mm -hmm. or home from music or your church? I started from a very young age, um, growing from the church, I, I loved saxophone mm. and obviously I couldn't afford it because I didn't come from the very rich background so it took me a lot of time to get one. Mm. So when I eventually got one I started it and that was it for me. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, but that those who ask why saxophone, why not other instrument like probably your keyboard, you know, and all. That was just where I found my happiness. Like you said, you like wind. It's just a wind instrument. Yeah, it is. It. It's a or wind instrument. Or you love wind instruments. Yeah. Why? Just the sound. It it just makes me happy. That's the mm, idea. Okay. This has been my own way of running away from my troubles, and mm, okay. at the same time. It feels good doing what I love doing yeah. and I'm being paid to do it. Hmm. Okay. So that's just the idea. Yeah. Okay, l l let's, you know, take this back from the basics. You said you started at a very l a young age. Um, yeah. Can you take us through that journey? How did it start? As far back as age 15, 14. Oh, okay. A teenager. Oh, teenage. You this is a teenager. from church or? How? From church. From church. Oh, okay. From church. I remember starting from my mom's church, then I moved out, I got into the, the institution and there was this drive for me, I just felt I wanted to do this thing and I was sure. Mm. Okay, so you, you learnt the, the skills from church, did yeah. you hone it afterwards like going to a music school? Or I, you just kept practicing until you got better? I practiced, I learned from a lot of people and Eventually, over time, I had to put in for some classes. Oh, okay. and so at the point you wanted to um, do music, did you at any point relate it to your family? And what was the reaction like? <laughs> it was a very bad one. Mm. I could remember my brother then telling me I was going to end up on bike. Mm. Not because he didn't love me. That guy loves me. Like, but but just, you have to say that? Yeah. Like, you know, at some point you feel like people don't like you when they're telling you the truth. But he just felt it was not the best thing for me. Mm. I needed to do something better to him. He felt music was not it. Like, why would you leave every other thing and you're carrying one high on? That was what I used to call the saxophone there. So you're carrying one high on everywhere and she think that's how it's done. That's how people survive. That's how people succeed. And his major statement then was always, you end up on bike if you're not careful. Interesting. And so are you on bike now? I'm not actually. <laughs> <laughs> so then, God has been faithful. Yeah, God has indeed been faithful. But then what's your position in the family? The last one. The la yeah, I was going to come to that because for your five. elder brother to the last of five. So yeah. aside your other brother, did your mom, your dad, or your other siblings support that move? It was just my mom. Hmm. Oh, really? Maybe, I yeah, think just you had mom. that issue of only more than... It was just, just my mom. At the point you decided to... As good as it was, my mom that paid more than 80% of my first sax. Like, she got me the first sax. Mm. Oh, okay. She just wanted to see that drive from my hand, if I really wanted this thing. So she wanted to see how committed I was to it. So my little mm -hmm. change was what was added to it. Mm. Less than 10%. Oh, wow. Okay. So yeah. at the time you quit school for music, what was the plan? Just um, keep realizing, keep honing the skill till I like, get better. I mean, what I was the plan? I didn't quit per se. Mm. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, I uh, after me after my hand I mm -hmm. I stepped back. Okay. I went full time into the thing. Music and the cool. idea was why I practically took out time to do that was as I when I was in school, it was a major distraction kind of. Okay. I have gigs, I have ministrations and I'm I'm leaving classes, classes. and I'm beginning okay. to skip some things and so I pulled through the hand okay. yeah okay. the OND so after my OND I just I just felt I can always do this so I'll just come back to it of which it's not like I'm quitting that I would definitely do Go back at some point. yeah I'll oh, do okay. some other better things than even HND, the HND. Yeah, yeah but I felt as at that time it was the best thing for me to do okay so I left it so how has the music been for you, that for you to have them um, post your schooling, not quit now, mm -hmm. post for yeah. a while and to do this? That means it's something really important to you. So yeah. how has music, how has this been for you over the years? It's been everything. Mm. Like everything. That's aside God now. Yeah, aside yeah, aside God. It's been everything. That's the only way I have been giving back. I, I run some CSR programs. Okay. I've been so it's like the only, I think two days ago, I posted something on my WhatsApp status and I just wanted to get a review of what I have been like to the, everybody that knows me. Then I got some very fantastic mm. response and feedback and I just felt, man, you're not quitting. Oh. Oh, that you talk. You felt like you're not quitting. You felt. You said, you said to yourself, "You're not quitting." Yeah. That means at some point you had thought of quitting. <laughs> it's been terrible. Please tell us about it. There were times when I couldn't even afford good food. Mm. I had okay. to sell my car. Mm. A lot of things. So it's been tough. And I'm sure those period that time, and uh, I'm just trying to give a scenario. Your brother will be like, okay, I, I told you, I told Funny you. Funny enough, he didn't happen. know I ran away oh. from home. <laughs> 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 Both while he didn't, you know, when you, he didn't even get to hear about those things, he just. Yeah. Social media is funny. Mm. So he sees my pictures and I'm still doing fine, but deep down I was going through a lot. lot. So, but then uh, that was back then. And but how has it been now? How is it now for you? God has been faithful. That's the only thing I can say. God has just been faithful. It's been good. Mm. Okay, l let's delve into the music. Um, let me start from the basic. Um, do you just compose or you sing as well? I those don't who play sing. and sing. Okay. I don't sing. I just play my saxophone. You just play your saxophone. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you have your own singles or you just do covers? I don't have my own single, okay. but I'm working on one. Oh, okay. And basically, it's just been my praise medleys and I know. I know, okay. Yeah. Um, looking at the, I, I mean, because I know you're, it's almost mm -hmm. like you're strictly into the, um, you know, gospel ministrations in terms of the composition. But yeah. you can play at several. I play events, I play, play weddings, weddings, I play birthdays, birthdays. Okay, fine. corporate events. But in terms of the composition, your medleys, there, there are more of um, the there praise more medleys. Praise medleys yeah. Okay, so I'm um, looking at the praise medleys. What has the acceptance been within, you know, the Christian fold? It's been good. At least, I know a few of my jobs that premiere on TV stations, and I think at this stage, I can still say thank God. So you, we have a lot of saxophonists yeah. in the in the gospel scene, yeah. and I, I really don't know how my figures about um, or know so much about in secular scenes. Maybe I maybe there are a lot of them, but I know yeah. for sure that in the gospel scene there are a lot of people who play the sax and play amazing amazingly now how do you cope with this i don't know if it's, it's good to call it competition but then competitions are not bad because they have healthy yeah. competitions yeah. so yeah. how do you cope with this competition um um frank sax i need you to come play my event and you're saying for instance i'm taking um six hundred thousand there and uh, someone else will collect two hundred thousand what are you talking about and probably you you know this person is good or someone is preferring you are charging probably two hundred thousand and someone goes to Probably mm -hmm. meeting Nathaniel Bassi, of course, is a trumpeter that would collect more because of the name and the thing. Yeah. So, how do you cope with things like that? One thing I've learned all my life is I don't, I don't get jealous of who I'm supposed to be learning from. Okay. No. Oh, okay. Yeah. If there is this guy that is bigger, brand-wise, I all I just do is learn from you. What are you doing that's making you more successful? But then, as a human being, there's, you kind of write the fact we, that there know, are times you actually feel like, see that I'm not good enough. Yeah, there, there's this little else. part of yeah. us that feel jealous. So once I feel jealous, I just call myself, guy, okay, you're doing this, and I speak to someone about it. 
and it has worked for me over the years. But then, coping with competition, how do you measure up to show that um, f you are looking at me now, or you don't think I'm good enough now? Mm. Maybe next time you see that. So, what are those things you do to make sure that the next time they are looking out for you, they are not prizing you down because mm. you don't have the name and team yet? I work. Mm. That's great. I just work. Talking about the work now, um, who have you have you collaborated with other saxophonists within the Christian fold? Are you looking at, you know, collaborating? With I presently am on a particular project with someone. Okay. And he's he's a Maybe young tell. guy. Are they doing your any? It's okay. It's, no, he's he's doing fine too. Okay. Are they doing your any? He's a redeem guy and he's a fantastic player. Oh, so. you're a member of redeem. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And. Uh, I, think I have a particular project ongoing with him, and I, I work with few other daddies in the game. Okay. DJ Sax, mm. Shagun Lua oh, Yomi, yeah. and mm. that's just so. A are you me. looking at working? I know you said um, a single is in the works, and as well as yeah. you know an album subsequently. Are you looking at collaborating with some of them on on the project? No, okay. no, not for now. You want it to be strictly yeah. you, your expressions. Oh, no, that's, okay. Let's take a look at the uh, Nigerian gospel industry. You may not be a singer, but you are in the music sphere, and that still mm -hmm. makes you part of them. Look yeah. at the Nigerian gospel industry as opposed to what they call the uh, secular. secular. Now, well, I think they, they have something called inspirational singers. Now, mm -hmm. for instance, they call Timmy Dakolo one of the inspirational singers mm -hmm. and all. But let's look at this comparison. There are a lot of people just give themselves comparison. Um, com Give yourself competition. They're so competitive. The Nigerian music industry and the secular music industry, which is making wave more. I know we had, um, there's a time when Chidi Ma came up newly, and she was a member of First Square Gospel yeah. Church. She was a, an amazing singer in the choir, and then she won the competition, and then she went into secular. There were talks of she had to make more money and all, but then she's back to um, the gospel, gospel again. Yeah. Well, that's her choice. But then from looking at that scenario, why do you think there is this? Competition between the secular, whether there's more money in sing, in doing secular music as opposed to the Christian music. Or the, the first question I ask anybody is, why did you start it? Mm. Okay. If you were sure you wanted to do the gospel, then you should be sure that you're not going to get that money until you are known. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's just to be, you keep at whatever you're doing, be consistent. So I think that consistency would only come from your passion. So it won't be the money driving me. It has to be something else. So when every other thing comes around, oh, the secular pays more, I just console myself with, I'm doing it for passion. But the money okay. is important, especially it, in the economy like is. this. Yeah, it is. Important. But you know, at times, if you chase after the money, you might be losing a lot. So. Mm. Okay. Let's talk about you. What inspires you? I, I know sometimes, you know, as a creative, it's difficult to just get into that place of muse where, you know, you can always sing and perform and just express yourself. So times when you're on the low, how do you get inspired to be able to perform? I pray. <laughs> that's because you're a Christian. Yeah. Okay. You know, that's what works for me now. Right. It might not work for someone else. Yes. But whenever I feel that way, I just pray. Okay. The deep side before you said I pray, what was behind that? <laughs> because, because it's a bit deep for you to just pray. You know at times you pray and it, it feels like I'm just praying. Nothing mm. is happening. Mm. But it's happening. So it hasn't it's, just manifested. Yeah. So I just pray. Mm. I just pray. I pray and I pray till something happens. But when I'm praying, you know the way we get anxious and... Mm -hmm. I try as much as possible to reduce that part. So I just live the normal life. While nothing is happening, I just happen to myself. Mm. I come in front of myself, pick up the sax, and I feel like, oh, I'm playing on a very big platform. And well, now, tell us the level of joy. I know you mentioned that the sax gives you fulfillment, mm -hmm. but can you measure it? I want to know the level of fulfillment. If you can measure it with percentage or whatever you want. What, what, what's the level you could say the sax gives to you? 80, 85. Oh, 85 percent. Yeah. All right, you, because you have that um, satisfaction when you play the sax, we're going to shut big. When we come back, you play the sax for us and they want to listen to your sound, amazing sound you have. Uh, All right, then we'll take a short break now. Friend Sax is still right here with us in the studio. We'll be right back.